continue uh, with our discussion on functions. And last time we stressed the fact that with a function, a function is defined as a relationship, so it's a set of ordered pairs in which each of the x values has the same unique y value. Each individual x value generates the same unique y value. So you can't have the same x value generate two different y's. And there's a, a simple test if you have a, if you graph uh, uh, a, a function, there's a simple test to see whether the, the graph represents a function or not. So let's, let's <clears throat> generate a couple of graphs here and I'll show you what this test is. Let's look at the equation y equals x plus 1. We want to determine if this is a function. So we're going to generate some ordered pairs, x and y, and we'll assume some values for x. So we'll start with 0. If x equals 0, y is just going to equal 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. If x equals 1, we'd have 1 plus 1, y would equal 2. If x equals 2, we'd have 2 plus 1, y equals 3. If x equals a negative 1, we'd have a negative 1 plus 1 would be 0. If x equals a negative 2, we'd have a negative 2 plus 1, which is a negative 1. There's 1. <coughs> now look at, we have each is a different value for x, so we're, we're not generating the same values for x, so this so far looks like a function. And we'll sh uh, show you a, a simple test in a bit on, uh, to confirm that. The next equation, let's do y equals x squared. I'm going to graph these all for you in a minute. So we're going to generate values of y after we assume some values for x. So we'll let x equals 0. 0 squared is 0. We'll let x equals 1. 1 times 1 is 1, so y would equal 1. If x equals 2, we'd have 2 squared, which is 4. y would equal 4. Negative 1, we'd have a negative 1 squared is 1, so uh, y would equal 1. And a negative 2, a negative 2 squared is 4, and y would equal 4. And we'll do one more. Let's do y, equal, y squared equals x. Now we should solve this, <coughs> put it in a form so that y is by itself on one side of the equal sign. So to do that, we'll take the square root of both sides. The square root of y squared is y, and the square root of x is the square root of x. So now we'll assume some values for x and for y. If x is 1, well, the square root of 1 is a plus 1, or it could also be a minus 1. Because a minus 1 times a minus 1 is 1, so the square root of 1 could be a minus 1. What about 4? Well, the square root of 4 is 2, but it could also be a minus 2. The square root of 4 is a plus or a minus 2 because a minus 2 and a minus 2 times a minus 2 is a 4. And we'll try one more. 9, the square root of 9 is 3 or a negative 3. So let's graph these three numbers. Let's take a look at our definition first. Our definition for a function was no two ordered pairs have the same first component and the same second component. Well, none of these have the same first component. 
So these are all ordered pairs. They're all functions. That's a function. This is a function. Here, no two ordered pairs have the same first component and different second components. Well, none of these have the same first component. So none of the, all, all of these ordered pairs represent a function. This is a function. What about here? The definition, no two ordered pairs have the same first component and different, different second components. Well, these do have different first components. And notice that each of these first components generates a different number for the second component. A plus one is not the same as a negative one. A plus two is not the same as a negative two. A plus three is not the same as a negative three. So here we have the same x value generating two different y values. The same x value generating two different y values. Same x value generating two different y values. This is not a function because Different x, the same x value can generate different y values. So that is not a function. Well, let's graph these. <clears throat> Graphing is an easy way to tell. If you can generate the graph of a function, you have an easy way to tell if it's a graph of an algebraic expression. You have an easy way to tell whether it's a function or not. Let me find my protractor here. Here we go. I'm going to graph these all on the same axis. It'll just make it go faster. I think I can, I can fit these on the same axis. So this will be my x and my y. And we're going to go positive to the right. I'll mark off some hash marks here. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, 1, 2, 4, 5. This is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, let's do the first one. We uh, graphed the first expression that we calculated our ordered pairs for. It was y equals x plus 1. And our, coordinate, our, our, our um, ordered pairs were x equals 0, y equals 1, which would be right there. Here's our 0 and our 1. The next was x equals 1 y equals 2, which would be up here. x equals 2, y equals 3, which is here. x equals a negative 1, y equals 0, which is here. And x equals a negative 2, y equals a minus 1, which was here. So if we draw a line through these points, we get a line that looks like that. And we said that was a function. This is y equals x plus 1. Each x generates a unique y. It is a function. The next one we graphed was y equals x squared. And we got the following ordered point points. 0, 0. Well, that's right there. And we got 1, 1. So here's x equals 1, y equals 1 is there. We got 2 and 4, 2 and 4 right here. We had a negative 1 and a positive 1. That would be up here. And a negative 2 and a positive 4 is up here. 
if we connect these dots, we get a graph that looks like this, which we'd expect because this is y equals x squared. We have an x squared term, so we're going to get a parabola, and that's what we got. And we said this was also a function because each x generates a unique y. We don't have two x's or two different y's for the same x. And finally, our last equation was y squared equals x, which solved when we saw that we got y equals the square root of x. And we said, well, if x equals 1, we could have y is a plus 1 or a minus 1. If x equaled 4, y could equal a plus 2 or a minus 2. And 9, I can't put that one on here. I don't have enough room. But if we just connect these dots, we end up with a parabola that looks like that. But this was not a valid function because each x generated <coughs> two different values for y. Each x has a value here and a value here for y. Two different values for y. This is not a function. And one way to determine whether a graph is a function or not is to draw a vertical line. So let's draw a vertical line. There's a vertical line. Does this ver If the line intercepts the graph only one time, the graph is a function. If the line intersects the graph more than one time, the graph is not a function. So here was our first graph. Here's our vertical line, which didn't turn out to be too vertical. It's a little slanted. But notice that it only intercepts the first graph one time right here. And the first graph was a function, so that rule holds. Here's the second graph. Notice anywhere we draw a vertical line, it will only accept, intercept the second graph at one point, right here. And here's our third graph. Here's our vertical line. <coughs> Notice the vertical line intercepts the second graph twice. So that's called the vertical line test. And if you draw a vertical line through a graph and it intercepts the graph in more than one place, the graph is not a function. The vertical line test. A set, uh, and you can read that in your book. All right, that's the end of this lesson.